Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Patriga, and today I'll be presenting 3D visualization of nanoscale tomography using holographic displays. Shown here is a cobalt phosphide nanoparticle. In the bottom left, its tilt series and resulting reconstruction through electron tomography are shown. Electron tomography is a time-intensive process, taking multiple hours for data collection, reconstruction, and interpretation. And as such, it would benefit from any techniques or tools that would hasten any step of the process. But taking advantage of how humans understand 3D, holographic displays enhance the electron tomography process. We can take 3D data, render it, and pipe it to the holographic display such that it appears in 3D. An example using a nanoparticle is shown to the right on a looking glass display. This process may be implemented in several ways, such as displaying high quality tomographic data, interacting with data in unique ways, and leveraging the hardware for quick 3D understanding. Each of these ideas will be explored during this talk. To provide brief background, electron tomography is an essential technique for understanding 3D materials. By taking a tilt series of projection images, we're able to take 2D data and turn it into 3D data through the reconstruction process. We do actually have a choice here though. Using holographic display, we can rapidly reproject the 2D data such that it appears 3D using the hardware, like in the figure on the right. Or we could follow the standard tomographic process for understanding 3D and enhance it at the end using the display. We'll talk about the second point first for familiarity, but we will return to the hardware visualization technique later in this talk. Shown here is a projection image of the cobalt phosphide nanoparticle. A projection image is great for analyzing data along a 2D plane, but information along the view axis is compressed, inhibiting our understanding of the material. Looking at the nanoparticle, we can appreciate its distinct spike shapes, but it's impossible to tell whether they point to the foreground, background, or along the view plane. However, once we have reconstructed the 3D data set from electron tomography, we can present the data with visual cues that exhibit the inherent depth of the object. These so-called monocular cues describe visual information that can be appreciated by a single eye to understand our 3D world. To start, we add shading and lighting. The nanoparticle's features are now easily compared because we have color and brightness implying some distance from some virtual light source. Next, Relative size is another common monocular cue, which is invoked through easily digestible geometries that provide scale and orientation. Scale cubes, like the 50 nanometer scale cube shown here, are analogous to a scale bar on a 2D image. These help contextualize the nanomaterial. Perspective increases or decreases the size of features based on their proximity to the virtual viewport. This cue imitates how we perceive physical objects in the real world, creating an illusory 3D effect. It also combines with relative size to more convincingly convey an object's size. Motion parallax occurs when the object moves in the viewport, and it is why moving objects helps convey 3D. The velocity of features implies their distance from one another and a subtle sense that the brain can intuit from. Together, these monocular cues do a good job in applying object depth and enhancing understanding of a nanomaterial. However, humans are binocular beings, meaning we combine our two eyes and brain to more naturally intuit 3D information. If we could leverage our binocular vision, we can improve our depth of understanding immensely. The question then, is how can we utilize binocular cues to show data? Binocular vision in humans occurs because we have two eyes that are some distance apart. When focused on the same object, this distance results in each eye receiving slightly different images and thus slightly different sets of binocular cues, like those shown in this strontium cube figure. The human brain can combine these images to form a more detailed understanding of the object. This retinal disarity, or stereopsis, is a major binocular cue that rapidly informs humans of 3D objects. How then can we invoke this cue in our data? Optimistically, we could utilize technology to simply print 3D models. Realistically though, the financial and time costs are infeasible. Using a Stratasys J750 to produce a seven inch tall strontium cube model like that shown on the right, costs about $300, takes several hours to print, and then takes many more hours of uh, post-print polishing to remove any print defects. And this doesn't even account for operation and cost of the printer itself. Granted, it looks good as a one million times scale up, but it doesn't really make sense for looking at data too easily. We need a method that is less costly and less time intensive, indicating the exploration into mixed reality tools. Holographic displays, like the looking glass show on the right, are a promising solution. Their effect relies on light refraction through a lenticular lens, which is the array of cylindrical lenses as shown on the left. To examine this effect, we'll look at a single cylindrical lens. Cylindrical lenses have a view frustum that defines the angle range that they operate in. For 3D visualization, a narrower view frustum is ideal as it compresses the projected views. A pixel aligned in the center of the lens will project its light along the lens's normal, leading to what we see for to look at the display head on. A pixel to the side of the lens will instead project its light at an angle, shown here is the left extreme pixel, whose light will be directed at an angle half the view frustum to the side. Similarly, 
This is the right extreme pixel that directs its light toward the opposite angle. All pixels are simultaneously projecting their light, meaning that all of their views are simultaneously visible. While difficult to convey via a 2D presentation, we have recorded videos to showcase this effect. As the holographic display rotates, it seems like the object rotates as well with all standard monocular cues. This is due to the projected views in the frustum. The result, however, is more important. If you're actually looking at the display, our eyes would be receiving two different views, and thus stereopsis is invoked. Even more interesting is that the projected views have no intended target. Any number of users may be within the view frustum and experience unique sets of visual cues to build understanding. This 3D experience is thus entirely collaborative, and with no required headgear, incredibly convenient for showing 3D depth information to a group. Translating data to a holographic display involves collecting a series of images along a viewplane. This is most easily done by manipulating a virtual camera. We perform most of our work in TomeViz, but most software can support this. From here, the data is organized in an ordered combined image. A generalized form of this quilt is shown in the middle with the recurring cobalt phosphide examples shown on the right. The quilt is textured through use of a shader, readying it for the display's lenticular lens. This carbon nanofiber with platinum nanoparticles is not a mesh surface rendering. Voxels here have measured opacity and intensity, and when rendered on the holographic display, they appear to occupy real space. This immediate use of the holographic display, showcasing detailed 3D data, is useful for conveying the dimensionality of a material to a group. Colleagues and peers may look at the data and gain unique 3D perspectives simply by moving within the view frustum. The combination of monocular and binocular cues leads to enhanced understanding of the material. To better explore the display's utility, we developed a Unity application combining ToneViz's mesh exporting capabilities, leap motion controls, and Looking Glass API. By combining 3D visualization with 3D interactivity, we leverage a user's innate spatial and 3D awareness to encourage understanding the data. The holographic display provides binocular cues, while the hand control interface allows for unique interaction modes. By doing this, a user is encouraged to look at a dataset in different ways, manipulating the data and moving their head to tease out details in the dataset. As mentioned before, it is possible to generate a 3D visualization using just tilt series data. What's more, this technique is quick. With fast data acquisition, it's possible to go from microscope to holographic display in around five minutes. This is because we can leverage how the hardware projects data to simply reproject our tilt series such that it appears in 3D. Projection data collected on a microscope by rotating the object is analogous to moving the camera around an object in an arc. This isn't dissimilar to the viewplane method of data collection associated with holographic displays. However, it is necessary to account for the differences between these two camera motions. Failure to do so will result in an effect dubbed toe-in. Toe-in is a distortion in an image caused by the eyes receiving incorrect monocular cues. If images are taken along an arc like that in the left figure, then all images show the object is the same size. However, the higher angled images on the viewplane should be smaller due to them being further away from the 3D object. This size issue will disrupt binocular understanding, leading to visual distortions like that shown in the right figure. To account for this, a small scaling must be applied to each image, such that it maps from our collection arc onto the viewplane. We perform this simple affine scaling to help mitigate the toe-in effect. As can be seen, this fix causes a convincing 3D effect. What's more interesting is that we can push the process for rapid 3D results. With only about 40 degrees of tilt needed, we can manually take a lower resolution tilt series within about 5 minutes. This is because the narrow angle range avoids issues with eucentricity in traditional tomography that complicates high tilt acquisition. This data can then be quickly adjusted and piped to the holographic display, giving a 3D visualization of the sample without the time-intense tomography process. Of course, tomography is still necessary for true volumetric data, but a user would face the time bottlenecks associated with the process. Thus, this rapid visualization method via the hardware is valuable for revealing 3D structure of a material while still on the microscope, effectively giving a 3D preview. Implementations are non-exhaustive but they indicate the holographic display's unique utility in presenting, understanding, and collecting data. With their given size and simple interface, it is not an unreasonable addition to a microscopy environment to enhance the tomography process. While not explicitly discussed, the holographic display is also applicable for other forms of 3D data collection, making it useful for materials characterization in general. Through discussion of visual cues and the relation to understanding 3D data and the principles of holographic displays, I've made a case for their inclusion in microscopy environments to support tomography. I'd like to thank Talal Lofman for coding assistance and his work on the Unity build, Jonathan Schwartz for his help in data collection and experimentation, and my advisor Robert Hubden for guidance during this project. I'd also like to thank Looking Glass Company directly for helping foster discussion of use cases regarding holographic displays. I'll be available for questions during Q&A. Thanks for listening.